Hey everybody, we're going to take this five, five, maybe ten minutes and really talk about something that I well, probably should have talked about earlier and I kind of forgot about it until we were all done with principal filming and, uh, and that was uh, kind of a how to build your own thieves bracers, those leather bracers that you can find everywhere and they, and they run anywhere from quite a bit to not too much but really Without too much effort, you can make your own, and they look pretty good. Now, when we're talking about bracers, we're talking about that f uh, forearm leather guard. Goes around our arm up to the elbow sometimes, or, or just even a short cuff of leather. Of leather, and uh, they're not very hard to make. So let's take a few minutes and just take a look. Take my watch off. And actually, I might take my cloak off. Miss Hobbs is here to help us. I'm sure cinnamon's going to show up eventually. So the first thing, let's take a look at a couple that I have. Um, these are the ones that you saw me wearing earlier in the video. Very simple leather uh, bracer. This is um, from Assassin's Creed. Young Ling got these many, many years ago. I'm not sure where the other one went. And it makes a very good bracer. And that's about kind of what I want to do. Kind of about that big. I kind of like that. Um, but it, And this is segmented with a couple rivets and sewn together. And it's a pretty good bracer. And I like this. Uh, but for my, my character Fingers McGee, I kind of want to build a set of bracers that have a red-based color to them. Because that's like the secondary color blacks and reds reds and blacks that kind of thing that's kind of the color coordination that I want to go in so this is good and I like this hi cinnamon and I'll probably wear this on occasion but I kind of want to make my own I want to show you how to do it okay and the other one that I have that I really like and I got this a long time ago is this hardened leather and steel bracer and I love the shape of this bracer because it does, high cinnamon, it does come up and kind of quasi protect the elbow. It's, uh, it, this one buckles closed as well. It's really kind of nice. Hi cinnamon. But I, I'm going to, I'm going to build mine out of straps. Uh, or not straps, I'm sorry, I'm going to lace mine shut. Um, but I like this shape. I really like this shape. So I want to stick with this shape. But if I was just doing one for myself, get my old cloth measuring tape out and I really kind of want to measure down from right at the bend of the elbow to just about the small part of my wrist which is right at 1 or 12 inches long so that's kind of as long as I want to have this and in fact if you look at this that is almost exactly what it is. It goes out to about 13 and a half because of this cutout. But if we were to take a look at this one, see, and it's a little shorter, but if I was to do that at 12, that would bring that out almost to the end of my wrist. So that's going to be my base. Is that 12 inches? And I'm not too worried about this shape you know, getting it exact right now because we're going to work on it a little bit. 12 inches. L, elbow. Wrist. So then we're going to want to do a measurement around my forearm. And it helps if you've got somebody else with you, but you can do it yourself. We don't want to get it too tight. That's about 16 inches, and we're going to cut that down to about 15. Okay. And that's big and wide because I'm going to put it over clothing, and we can trim that down a little bit. And then my wrist down here, so again, I want it to be loose measurement so then I can tighten, make it smaller later if I need to. It's right about 10 inches. 
So about five on either side of that center line. And that gives us our base. And if I were to take a straight edge, which uh, I had one here a minute ago. Uh, oh, there it is. That's a pretty good sized hunk of leather when you really think about it. But we're doing this out on paper first. So we can trim it up and make it fit a little better. Like I said, we want to have this big enough that we can trim it down if we need to. Exacto blade, but I think it'll work still. Yeah, we'll do the basic cut, cut out our shape real quick, see how close we are. And you're going to cut this out on paper first so you can get a real basic shape to it. And then we'll make our modifications before we transfer the pattern over to our leather. And there we go. So there's our start. And if we were to wrap this around our wrist, we're going to find out Okay, we got to do some trimming because, yeah, it works good on the outside, but look on the inside of my wrist. Um, so we got to do some trimming around here. And to do that, I'm going to get a bigger magic marker so I can see a little better. So I think this one works. We'll find out. Okay, so I can see it's going to have to come in quite a bit from that point. And we're just rough sketching this in right now. Let's see what we have. From the point of my elbow. Alright, so let's see what we got. So we kind of got this shape. And if we pull this off, which I really, like I said, I really like this shape. Yeah, you can see how this works. It's pretty close to that concept. And we're going to have to take a trim out on this interior a little bit. So I'm just going to use this as my guide. And that kind of gives us our rough shape that we want to go for. And then Take a look real quick. Smooth cut. We'll bring this around. And then So we're slowly building that gentle curve into this, but we'll do a little bit more curving in when we get our leather piece out. And I think I might do a little bit more right here just to kind of angle, make this into a nice circle. But how, what shape you want this, you can go really basic. You could make a simple flat one like this, you can kind of see, whoops, you can kind of see, okay, yeah, yeah, this is kind of the shape that we want to have, and it's going to be to your arm, and you're going to kind of play with your paper pattern a little bit, but even with this one, and all this, this does have a left and a right, 
So you can see how the left would go on there for this arm and the right would go on there for this arm. So, but yeah, I think when we bring this around, we're gonna have a little bit of a gap in the lacing and that's, that's more than fine, I think. And uh, all right, I think we're ready to move on to our next step. The next step is to get our leather out and actually do some cutting on that, okay? So there's a lot of different places you can get leather. I usually get mine from Tandy, uh, which is close by. And, uh, and there's all kinds of weights of leather. And you really want something not too heavy. This is a nice light leather. And I, I use for, for small things. And uh, this is the good side. You're going to see this nice side. And then there's a, a raw it or a, an unrefined or the flesh side and the odd side, the skin side. And we're going to mark our, mark our deal on here using as much of the leather as we can and not wasting a bunch of leather. Which I think would be right, right here, be a good spot for it. Now, different ways that you can mark this without making a mess. I'm going to mark it and try to be very careful. Wait, I have my pencil. Let's do that. Use my marking pencil because I don't want to waste this any of the leather as much as that I can anyway. You can see how that came out. It's pretty nice. And now with that same exacto, I'm going to start cutting the leather out. You just take your time. Okay, so there it is all cut out. It is kind of rolling the wrong way for us, but that's okay. Because what we're going to do next is kind of get roll her into shape. And then we're going to check out our sizing. Now that's, good. that's definitely going to be on the outside. And yeah, yeah, I think this is going to be, this is going to turn into pretty good, I think. Now, you can see this gap right here if we edge these up. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to trim this to match up to right here. We're going to got to get it set where we want and then we're going to mark it. Then we'll kind of arch this in just to kind of give her some shape. And then we'll trim it up so it'll fit good. Yeah. Now when that gets folded over and set, that'll line up in the back just Yes. Now the next step we're going to do is put our lacing holes in and that's why I have my mat out. This line's pretty straight and yep it looks like I want to put holes about one every inch and about a quarter of an inch in.
And the key, don't put a lot of pressure on it until you start to cut into the leather. And then you add more pressure to it. And you slowly cut that circle out. And if you're like old and decrepit like me, your arthritis kicks in. But it's not too hard. And to do all 18 of the holes probably took 10 minutes, really, which is not too bad. Let me take it careful on these corners because this is pretty, this is light leather, it's not, this is like belt leather. Uh, you can do it really heavy leather and then you're going to have to use a punch, uh, not a press punch, but a, an actual hammer and, and punch, poke the holes out of. And there's the last one see how that looks they all line up pretty nicely yeah well there's a little off on those but not too bad that's about right that's about what we want now so we're working on we've got the one done and I've got it stained and I really like how we did it I kind of use a dwarven pattern it's asymmetrical shaped and it sits really nice it really is high hops and uh, so what the next step is, is to make the second one. And they are asymmetrical. So to cut this out, I turned it over, traced it, and cut it out. And now I'm working on the design. And I use kind of a real basic design idea of geometric shapes. And I do have some tool work in here. And uh, I'm not going to have this one completely mirror on this one. I kind of want to do a dwarf head here. Uh, these are rogues, um, bracers, but uh, I want it to be dwarven made. So I'm kind of kind of looking at the design and going, okay, I know that I want to have about one inch from the side. I'm going to have my, my triangle cutouts here in here and that line is going to go basically right down through here and then my dwarf head will be here now to do the dwarf head I'm looking at various things to make it looking at my player's handbook for art looking at various source material for art I'm going online and looking as well uh, weapons and warfare there's a really nice piece and on the dwarves in here mountain trolls that's not what we want it has a really nice shape and some really nice art in here for ideas like Rohan and what have you and so once this is done I'll tool the leather with my tools and then we dye it this nice red color. It's kind of a darkish red. It'll go well. And, uh, and we'll see what we look like. Okay. So what I'm doing is tracing my drawing or my sketch of this dwarven helmet onto the leather, etching it into the leather. I'm making it a little sim more simpler, more simple than uh, I originally drew, just because I kind of went a little overboard with the details. And we'll just see how much detail I can get into it. So the next step is we're going to get wet this leather and start doing some of the carving. So I can see a little bit the patterns. I'm going to wet the leather. And you can see then the etching or the engraving has come in pretty good. Wet the leather so you can see. And also it makes the cutting a little easier. 
So we're just going to start at one point. Start itching away. I'm going back to my design too because I'm looking at these lines going, okay, where does that, what does that line do? Okay, that's that line right there, so it needs to come down. It's going to tie into this. To get this design, I went online and looked at some armor from the Lord of the Rings and sketched this out um, and then scaled it up to fit on here really nice. And that's really about it. And another way you can do it, of course, is get a, a, a clip art and blow it up and then sketch it out too. You put, you can actually put the paper on your monitor and scrap, you know, uh, copy it if you don't feel comfortable with coming up with your own design. All right, so that's our basic outline done. And now I'm just going to put in some more details. See how nice that comes out. Finish up the edges, and then I'll start tooling it. All right, yeah. There we go. Finishing up the last little piece. Here, taking a look. I really like kind of how it looks when you get it on your arm. It's going to look pretty cool. So the next step is going to be dyeing it to match this piece. This red, nice red. You can see, if you look at the two patterns together, they're slightly different. And actually this was my test one, so I don't feel too bad about it. Most of that was rough hand. <laughs> and, uh, but I think it's going to look pretty good. Um, I think I'm going to really like this. And uh, give me a second and I'll show you how to dye this puppy. I'm going to lay down a towel that I've already used. Just a cheap old towel that I got out of the kitchen. I'm using good leather dye. This one is red. Like I said, my contrasting color is black and reds for most of my characters. Or less the contrasting color of red. It could be brown and red, what have you. But this is really good dye. First thing we're going to do is wet this all down. Dye takes to the leather better when it's wet. Nice and wet. Give it a second or two to soak in a little bit. You see I did this crosshatch pattern on the back uh, just to give it a little bit of definition. I think it looks pretty good. And uh, the geometric shapes of the diamonds work pretty good. Now, there's different different things that you can put dye on. I just use this because it works really well to spread the way, spread the dye across. And we can rub it in a little bit. With that nice, nice red color all the way around. Yeah. Some of the nicks and dings in the leather are going to pick up that and make it a little darker, so it's not going to be unitone all the way around. You let this dry for a minute or two and then we'll put another coat on just to make it a little darker. You can see it's going to be that nice deep red. And normally I'll wear leather or oh, leather gloves. I'll wear plastic or rubber gloves when I'm doing this. I just happened to be out and didn't realize I was out. Because otherwise, you'll be wearing red dye on your hands for a few days. Alright, now we just wait. 
let it dry. Yeah, that's going to look really good. Look at that. Nice deep red. The uh, the tooling, very forward, and, or very simple. Just merely highlight the lines and a little bit of shadow marking in here just to give it some definition. But other than that, wasn't too long, uh, or wasn't too hard, wasn't too much work. I think total amount of time spent on this, what time is it now? Uh, about three hours from, I had it cut out. Oh no, no, I didn't. I started from cutting it out, punching it, drawing the design on, and doing the tooling. It was about three, three and a half hours total. Um, yeah, I could I could spend some more time and do some more work on it, and and uh, but really for what I want to do and the character that I want to have, this is about perfect. All right, gotta let this dry for a few hours, and then we'll take a look at it. Okay. All right. Hey everybody. So we got them done, and uh, really like them. That's the dwarven one. Well, they're both dwarven one actually. There's the other one. What's nice about this is I built them loose enough and they cover up the whole arm up to the elbow. The elbow's free, you've got lots of nice movement. We'll go take a look at them outside here after a while. But I can stick a couple of uh, throwing daggers in each one. Or a throwing dagger in each one. It makes a really cool little deal. Now that I've done the, the dwarf head one, I might have to go back and redo the other one. But I think it, uh, I think it really makes a nice deal. Total work on these was about four hours altogether overall. And uh, it really adds a lot to the, the outfit. Now, this is worn on a brown. It's the same tunic as a black, but it's just brown. Uh, so with a, bra with a black hood. And I think, uh, yeah, pretty happy with the build. Uh, didn't take too long. I might change out these laces with black laces. I thought the reds would look pretty cool, but eh, I don't know. And, uh, yeah. So there's your leather LARP bracers, and they look great with the gloves. Okay. Alright, let's get, let's get, uh, <laughs> let's get on to adventuring, shall we?